Hello, pre-algebra students. We're ready to begin chapter four, and the first section of chapter four is about the distributive property. When we finish with this section, I want you to be able to say, I can use the distributive property and combine like terms to simplify a variable expression. Now there's some big words there. The first big word is distributive property. I want to show you what that looks like. And then to say that you're going to be able to combine like terms, we're going to need to talk about what that means. And then of course you know what it means to simplify because we've been simplifying fractions, but what do you do when you simplify a variable expression? So some big words that we're going to be talking about here um, in the first section of chapter four. So let's talk about the distributive property. I used to talk about the paper boy distributing the paper. We do still get um, some papers that come around. If you've ever watched the person, they're throwing the papers out their car window. They're distributing the paper, kind of like A right there. I'm distributing A. Uh, nowadays, we talk about a distribution list, if you're talking about an email list. And the same concept, the email is going out to multiple people. So A here is being distributed to the terms inside the parentheses. So this is saying A is not only being multiplied times B, but you're also going to include A times C. So A times B plus A times C for any numbers A, B, and C. Any numbers, any real numbers, which is the only kind of numbers we're going to be talking about in pre-algebra. All right, what if A is at the end of the parentheses? Well, it's the same idea. They're just going to distribute backwards. A still multiplies times both B and C. What if it's a negative sign? A still multiplies times, times B and A still multiplies times C. You'll just notice that the sign in the middle is a negative sign. And there again, now we've talked about the negative can just be plus a negative CA. But don't forget, you've got to multiply C times A, and the whole thing will be negative. If you like changing the negative sign, the subtraction to plus a negative. <coughs> I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. All right, our first example is to distribute over addition. So 5 gets distributed to everything inside parentheses. So 5 is multiplied times X plus 5 multiplied times 2. Now let's finish simplifying this expression and we would write the final answer as 5x plus 10 and that would be your final answer. 4 is at the end, it's okay. We'll just distribute from, from the back of the parentheses. It'll be 4 times a plus, notice how I use the parentheses, I still keep a inside the parentheses and I'm still going to keep 7 inside the parentheses. And then when I simplify, that's 4a plus 28. And that'll be your final answer. Okay, well what about distributing over a subtraction sign? Let's change colors. Alright, 5 gets multiplied times everything inside parentheses. 5 times g, and I like to just go ahead and put my sign, my negative right there. And then it's 5 times 9 exactly what I did with addition, except my sign here is negative. So this becomes 5g minus, and 5 times 9 is 45. So there's your final answer, 5g minus 45. Now what would happen if you had changed it to this? 5 times g plus a negative 9. Those of you who like to do that, um, it's going to be the same answer, 5g plus 5 times a negative 9, and that'll be 5g, and then it'll be, of course, a negative 45, and we don't write plus a negative. P opposite signs turn negative when you're multiplying, and so that'll be the same answer. Um, but it just is a lot more work to simplify, so just keep your uh, subtraction sign in the middle. I'm going to give you some to practice in a minute. Let me show you one more. That'll be 6 times b minus 6 times 3. Make sure your B doesn't look like your 6. So that's 6B minus 18 and that would be your final answer. Alright, on the back we have some blanks we need to fill in. The first word is a term. A term is a number, a variable, or a product or quotient of numbers and variables. So for example, uh, 4 is a term. 
Four X is a term. X over four is a term. X squared is a term, so is four X squared. So if I put addition or subtraction signs in between, I make one big long expression. <clears throat> this is called an algebraic expression. What makes it algebraic? I hope you know the answer to that question. I'll ask you tomorrow to tell me the answer. What makes it an algebraic expression? Okay, this algebraic expression has one, two, three, four terms in this example. Four terms in that one example. All right, <clears throat> were there any like terms? What makes it a like term? Like terms are terms that contain the same variable that has the corresponding variable having the same power. So the same variable to the same power. So here we have x, here we have an x, and here we have x squared. So these would be like terms, believe it or not, because the x has the same power. Now it's fractions, it's four minus an understood one-fourth, and we can do that because we know now how to subtract fractions. So we could combine those like terms, but let's don't start with a fraction problem. That was my mistake. Let's start with something a little bit easier. Let's look for like terms in this expression. 7x squared plus 2x squared. Hey, they both have an x squared. I could pull x squared out. That's called factor out the x squared, and you have 7 plus 2, so that's 9x squared. That's how you would add like terms. Um, let me give you another one. How about 3a plus 7 minus 2a? Now, 7 doesn't have an a, so it is not a like term. But 3a and negative 2a are like terms. So let's rearrange and write our like terms together. Now I can factor out the a. That's 3 minus 2 plus 7. Now 7 just tags along. He's lonely. He doesn't have a variable with him. And that's an a, not a 9. And that gives us 1a plus 7. 3 minus 2 is 1. So we're finished. However, we don't need to write the one in front. That's kind of elementary. We know if there's only an A, there's only one A. And that would be your final answer. So what do unlike terms look like? Well, 2A minus B. Those are unlike terms. What about 7X squared plus 2X or minus 2X? It doesn't matter. They're not like terms, okay? In the term 17xy, 17 is called, and this should be review, the coefficient. The coefficient. And x here is, and y, they're both called variables. Okay? In the term m, the coefficient, I've already said that, is an understood 1. You know there's a 1 in front of m because there's only one m sitting there. If there's more than one m, you need to tell me how many m's. Maybe there's two m's or 16 m's, but if there's only one m, then the 1 is understood. All right, I want you to try these. Remember, you're going to distribute the 2 to everything inside parentheses. Distribute the 8. Here we want you to combine like terms. All right, continue working. Um, until you get to the back. Let's talk about number seven together. You're looking for the error. Courtney and Ben are both simplifying um, this problem, and I need you to look at Courtney's work and look at Ben's work and see if you can determine who is correct. Now remember, we're trying to combine like terms. So check to see whose work you agree with. What I always like to do is take the problem and work it myself first. Here I see two W4s. Here I see two plain old W's. Um, so I would probably bring out the W4, and that's going to be 4 plus 1 plus, bring out the W, and you have 3 minus 2. Oh, that ought to get you started, and see if you can find out who was right and who was wrong. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Be sure you explain your reasoning. All right, rewrite each expression using the distributive property and then simplify.
I'd like to do number nine with you since it's got three terms inside the parentheses. Four has a lot of distributing to do. It's got to be multiplied times the 6p squared times the 2p and times that negative 3. So it's going to be 4 times 6p squared plus 4 times 2p minus, notice how I just copy my sign here, minus 4 times 3. This is all you have to do when you see a negative sign is just copy it down and we'll take care of multiplying a negative and a positive when we get there. So 4 times 6, that gives us 24p squared plus 8p minus 12. Now, if there are any like terms to have this in simplest form, because it told us to simplify, I would need to add my like terms, but I am finished. That is all I can do there, okay? Go ahead and finish 10 through 14 on your own. I'm gonna leave you with a joke today. Uh, it's starting to get to be monster season. Do you know which monster is the best dancer?